My name is Josh. John, my partner, is here in the background watching cat videos for the fall 2012 semester of robotics at University of West Florida. We were given team projects. Most of the groups decided to do projects with the iRobot Create. Good for them. We decided to do a software project instead. It's a little more useful. The premise of this is that the book originally came with some software to get some simulations and output some transformation matrices to do calculations with. The problem is that most of these programs didn't work. They were crap. Couldn't install them. It was just a painful situation. So we decided to clean things up, make things work a little more slickly, and hope that the user experience was a little bit better. So let's move into the software and show you how the old one worked, how ours works, explain some things, and maybe you'll enjoy it. Hey, look, Windows XP. Got a programs here. That's where everything's installed. Got a skag. Open it up. Richard Mansour, original author. Heard he was a nice guy, I don't know. Let's enter a new robot description. We'll do three joints because it's default. Let's go with it. All right, here we have the DH parameters that's using the Denovit Hartenberg method to describe uh, in joint robot, whatever you want to call it. So we'll go in and change some values. Let's do one, two, three. I like one, so let's stick with one for a little bit. One, 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 one. Let's leave one, uh, you can't do alpha variable. A and alpha are invariable as far as real robots are concerned, so one, one, one. Oh, actually, let's do 90. Because that's an angle. 90. Let's leave the first joint theta variable. Okay. Enter 90 again. And then let's do a weird one. 65 is weird. All right. Here we have save robot. That's for another program called Armadillo, which will um, model a robot in virtual reality using the joint parameters you've given, the DH parameters, whatever you want to call them. We're not going to do that. We didn't find it very useful. We never used it in the class, and so there was really no point for us to rewrite the software. It didn't work in the first place, so it doesn't really matter. Get equations. All right. Here we have the equations, and you'll notice a problem here if you look very deeply. Apparently the computer doesn't know what 1 plus 1 is, thanks to Skag. This was one of the problems that we decided to solve for fun. If you don't know the answer, the answer is 2, just so you know. All right, let's close out of that, move into the MATLAB software. That works a little bit better. Boom, there it is. Let's clear everything out real quick. Yep. Caps lock. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and run Skaggy. We named it Skaggy because it's cute. We like cute things. Run. It's the number of joints the same. Hit enable, and you'll enable those three rows there, which are the joints we use. So let's enter in some parameters. Go for X, make D variable. That's right. Uh, one, one, one. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Oh, look, another variable one. Okay. First, we're going to do the numerical solution. That's just going to put everything out into four significant figures. Any more than that isn't really useful as far as we're concerned. So if you want to change that, you can do it by yourself. I don't know. Have fun with it. All right, we'll go ahead and generate that. Generate. See, it doesn't take too long. You have a nice little output. Here it'll display negative one instead of negative because it's symbolic. It's just the way things work. All right, so that works well. Now we'll do the symbolic approach. Really, there's no difference because it pre-calculates the solution to the transformation matrix, and then it decides to format the output in either symbolic or numerical. So really, there's no difference in speed. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a two-joint robot this time. Feeling sexy, so two is good. One, one. Let's just make a variable just because. Here you can enter anything. It doesn't really matter. We made it. Pretty robust, so let's do 90 degrees. You know 90 is my favorite already. Can I have a thing? And then let's make that last state variable. And we'll do symbolic. At one point, symbolic actually took a long time. It was painful. If you did more than three joints, it would take like an hour. And you'd go take a nap, come back, and it might be done. So let's go ahead and generate that now. See, it takes no time at all. It's great. Here you can see the variable joint parameters we put in. A1, theta2, oh look, R2 is variable, R1 is variable, 
everything's pretty clean, especially considering all the variable joints there. Um, and now, the point of this program, and also the benefit of it in doing it in MATLAB, is if you want to use any of these transformation matrices for calculation, then all you do is you take that answer. Let's do a, let's multiply it by the identity matrix and get the same thing out. Oh, look at that, how pretty. If you ever need to uh, format the output, by the way, in case there's a numerical solution and it's a little bit long, let's show you that real quick because that can be painful. Let's do two joints, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, weird joints, that way you get long numbers. Generate the numerical, boom. All right, if you want to format the output into something a little bit longer like I described before, then we'll do VPA and we'll take the answer and then you can do Let's do nine significant figures just to make yourselves happy. Look at that. There it is. VPA is variable floating point arithmetic. It's uh, it's kind of useful if you have to do any symbolic stuff because eval doesn't really work for that. So, All right. Well, that's what we had to show you. I hope you enjoyed it. We're kind of proud of it. So have a great day. We can get it.